the man, the myth, the legend joins us. It's like Christmas Day around here. Matt Humans in studio with the top 50 power ratings today. How are you, pal? Hey, it's great to be here. It feels like I just left this studio a few hours ago, and I did. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it was 11 o'clock yeah. at night out here That's right. on the yeah. West Coast. Yeah. All right, so tell everybody, when I tweeted this out yesterday at Mitch Moss Radio, maybe my favorite paragraph of the entire story, <clears throat> you are, as we call you, like the foremost authority on this in the entire country. Explain to people why that's the case. <laughs> well, uh, this is a lifestyle for me. It's not just a, just not a joke. All right, so I would die without fast food because I don't cook. And uh, I eat this three to five times a day, fast food stops. And, you know, I plan out my stops throughout the day, too. I mean... <laughs> Basically, it's, um, I would say for the last, I just, uh, you know, crossed over 50 not too long ago. So probably since I was two, I started eating fast food. Uh, my mom claims the second thing I ever said was Burger Chef. Um, do you remember a, a fast food franchise called Burger Chef? I do it not was in the Midwest. That, no. It was kind of like Burger King back in the day in the 70s. And it was my favorite spot to go when I was a kid. And, um, mm-hmm. She said we drove by a Burger Chef, and I, I jumped up out of the seat and pointed at it and said, Burger Chef, when I was like two years old or mm-hmm. something like that. And she claims the first thing I ever said was Mama, which I don't remember saying. I think Burger Chef might have been first. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> I believe it. You were destined for greatness. <laughs> Absolutely. No, but seriously, uh, at least three, four, or five times a day, I go to fast food joints, and uh, I love it. You know, it's, uh, like I said, I, I don't cook. I don't have real silverware or plates at home. Eat off paper plates when I go to a friend's house and they have uh, real plates. I look for paper plates in the cabinet because that's what I do. I don't, uh, and I'm not making any of this stuff up or exaggerating. Oh. If, uh, if you came over to my house, you would, uh, you would see the proof. Yep. Also, I love this because uh-huh. people are going to, you know, ah, the diet, whatever. Never, never sick day in 40 years. Well, I mean, that's the thing that backs, up, backs it up too and gives sure. you more credibility. If I eat fast food and I looked like a fat slob and I was calling in sick to work all the time, um, you would say, well, that's a pathetic lifestyle. What are you doing with yourself? Uh, but that's not the case. I've never uh, missed a day of work. Been employed almost 30 years full time, and uh, I don't plan on missing a day of work anytime soon. You know, so I rarely get sick. I don't sleep as much as I should, probably drink too much, mm-hmm. uh, but I do work a lot and get a lot accomplished. And, uh, you know, if you sleep all day, you're not going to get a lot accomplished. So I don't sleep all day. Very true. Do you, uh, have, your, do you have your fast food day planned out today yet? I do not. I can tell you that last night before the show, before I came in here, I stopped at McDonald's. After the show, I stopped at Wendy's. And then uh, before I came in here for the show tonight, I made a uh, Salisbury steak banquet, Salisbury steak meal at home before I came in here. I love Salisbury steaks. You can't find those in fast food joints. No, you cannot. No. Okay, next segment, we'll get into top 10 and find out if you have a new number one. Mm-hmm. Tell us about your like movers and shakers from between, let's say, numbers 11 and 50 this year. I don't have to pull up the list here, but I can tell you that. Um, I can tell you, you're, you're what you you seriously uh-huh. um, gave too many merits to one fast food joint that fell down quite a bit in your rankings. Too many merits? Yes. Uh, the let's... merits. Uh, and that is too much negativity, I should say. It's In N Out Burger, fell to number 12. Oh, we're talking, I thought you were talking about between 40 and 50. Oh. Okay. So anything between 10 and 50. Anything we're between like 11 and 50 here, yeah. Right, so in and out Burger used to be one of my favorite stops, for sure. I would go there probably five, six times a week. Uh, recently, I've, I'm tired of it. And, uh, you know, I, I don't, maybe that's because I've been going there for 20 years. And you just, uh, you know, it's like uh, sometimes a married couple. They've been married a long time and they get sick of each other and split up. And... Uh, I don't like In-N-Out Burger as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. And in fact, Fair. a lot of people hate the fries. Yep. But I ask for the fries to be well done when I go there, and that makes them much better uh, because I think I always believe that the fries got to be golden brown. they got to be crispy if they're going to be any good. You know, you go to McDonald's, and sometimes you get the fries, and they're white and soggy, and you just want to throw them out the window. Or you're not going to eat that crap. You wouldn't feed it to a starving dog. Uh, so I think the, uh, the fries at In-N-Out are acceptable if you get them well done. Uh, I just gotten a little bit tired of the place, and Mitch, to tell you the truth, I found better burgers at other joints okay. uh, that are more okay. appealing to me at this point. And uh, I, I know that In-N-Out Burger is a polarizing fast food franchise. You either love it or you hate it. 
I've loved it for a long time. I well, just the hype, fall, though, too. Fall somewhere in the middle. Yeah, the yeah. hype. Everyone. Just, well, the expectations get right. so high. Oh, in and out. So I had some right. friends visit yep. from uh, the Midwest last fall, and they had never had In and Out Burger. Can't wait to try it. Got to get the In and Out Burger. They went there like, you know, it's not really that good. Wow. Uh, a lot yeah. of a lot of people emailed about. Did you mm-hmm. upgrade and your thoughts on cookout, which I never heard of? I think- so of all the franchises on the list, that's a good question. You got 50 franchises here. I've got uh, – I had a power ratings on another eight, so I had 58 franchises power rated. There's only two of them I've never been to, and one in the top 50 is cookout. Okay. So I want to go there. I've looked at it on the website. It looks like a place I would really like. Hot dogs, hamburgers, yeah. you know, classic uh, okay. cookout type of fare. I talked to a couple of my scouts, one in Nashville, Tennessee, and oh. one in Atlanta. Beautiful. And um, they both told me cookout's outstanding and, and you would love it. I did talk to another scout last year who said uh, he hated the place. But the the other two gave it a thumbs up. So I bumped it up. You know, I, I looked at it on the web and I said, this is a place I think I'd really like. Okay. We're looking at the rankings right now, 50 through 41. Uh-huh. Uh, we kick it off with Sonic at 50. And a lot of people agreed with our producer, Luke, that yes, he was correct about the fries at checkers slash rallies who check in at 47 on this list. They backed him up on that because he uh, raved about their fries uh, a couple weeks ago. Boston Market, a big mm-hmm. faller on the list from 32 down to 49. So we're going to have the uh, column up on the website, vcin.com, here pretty soon. And you can see where all these franchises were ranked last year. And my analysis of each one, I've got a, you know, a paragraph basically written on each franchise. Because uh, Mitch, Paul, every year we get uh, you know, listeners, viewers of the show who go to Portillo's and they will tweet us and say, I'm going to Portillo's for the first time. What should I get? So everything is in this column. All the best uh, food options in yep. each franchise in the yep. column. If Instead of asking us, just call it up and look. And I've got the best bet listed for some of the top franchises. But, uh, you know, Boston Market, I talked to Chris the Bear Felica, who's going to join the show here later, and also uh, Aaron Moore, VSIN contributor who lives on the East Coast. And they both said Boston Market's taken a precipitous fall in the last couple of years, and it's got financial troubles, and a lot of franchises have closed. I can't even find them, to be mm. honest. Yeah. It's hard to find. The last time I was in Connecticut, when I went to ESPN in Bristol, I was stopped at Boston Market. I love it. The food's outstanding. The problem is you just can't find the franchises anymore, and that's why I dropped at number 49. I like Earl of Sandwich. Mm-hmm. I think it's picking up some steam here, mm-hmm. right? But it's also not readily available across the country. And explain to people your qualifications that it takes to actually be considered, because you have Panera Bread in the top 50, and I think some people would say that's not fast food. Right. And uh, I debated that one, too, because uh, I did see a Panera Bread in California that had a drive through Wow, okay. And that's why I decided to say, All hey, right. you know, we'll go ahead and make this a fast, we'll, we'll go ahead and make this a, a fast food franchise. Like I said, there's gray areas and everything in life. You can't say it's a hard and fast rule that if a place doesn't have a drive through it can't be fast food. Look, everything's changed since 2020, right? Yeah. You can order food on the app. You can run in, pick it up, take out. You can get it fast. Like a place like Zippy's, you're not going to find a lot of drive throughs but the takeout window is so fast, you can get your food ah. quicker than you can at a place like Popeye's drive through Wow. You know, so I think the apps, you know, we talked about that a little bit too for advantage gamblers. Oh, absolutely. If you got to have it with the deals. A lot of these places, Save you got to use the apps on the fast food. I don't use as many as I should, uh, but you got to use the apps on the fast okay. food. And also, I think the takeout is a great option because you can order ahead and zip there and get it. It's ready for you when you get there at places like uh, maybe Panera Bread or uh, Zippy's. Now we're looking at 40 through 31. I'm surprised you have five guys at 35. A lot of I, people are surprised I that. love five guys. Uh, Popeye's 34. Love their chicken sandwich. Not a, I love their sides as well. Uh, one quick question. Is Chipotle on the list? No. In, okay, really. In light of what's happened now, people filming the workers when they put the burrito together or the bowl and saying, let's come heavy with the meat. What, and now putting them on Front Street, and then the, oh, the CEO coming out and saying, oh, we're going to take care of you. We're going to give you that extra meat now because it, people are filming and putting it on social media if they don't, you know, they're, they're not coming heavy. Of the, I had five franchises that barely missed the top 50, and uh, Chipotle, I think, came in at number uh, 54. Okay. Right. Yeah. Mm. You also have Capriati's at number 31. You think that's way too low, don't I you? I question that one, yeah. Capriati's, does that have a drive through window? I don't think they do. Oh. I, I went back and forth between Capriati's and oh. Jersey Mike's a lot. 
are greater. Ooh. But you Pop know, bison, I, five I think it does qualify as fast food. All right, so. we'll get into the we'll we'll work our way down the list, get into the top ten, and find out if there's a new number one on Matt Eumann's 2024 top 50 po- uh, fast food power rankings coming up next year on Beeson. So let's work our way down now the list, and I have an observation from your rankings between 21 and 30. Let's say you have four burger joints in the top 30, and in order you go 21 smash burger, 25 steak and shake. 26 Fat Burger, 29 Fud Ruckers. Man. Can you explain why you have it ranked like that? Yeah, so I've got five categories that I, I do the power rate, r- ratings in. And it's um, the five categories are uh, food quality, menu variety, uh, nationwide availability, uh, efficiency of service, and intangibles. And the intangible category is similar to how I do power ra- ratings for uh, college basketball and college football teams. So the highest score you can get in each category is a 10, right? And the lowest score is zero. So you, you could give a, a 7.5, an 8, 8.5. Basically, when I get done grading each franchise, you come out with a power rating that's going to be something like you know, 42 and a half, and uh, another franchise is going to have 43. And um, that's how, believe me, these power ratings between like 15 and 35 are, are really close. A lot of the stuff is uh, within you know a few points of each other. But... I'll tell you, the Smash Burger has been one of my favorites for a long time, and I, I love the uh, spicy jalapeno Baja Burger. Have you ever had that? It's really, really good. That's, that's a damn good burger, and uh, bonus points to Smash Burger for that. I think they got some pretty good, uh, what, seasoned fries? Oh, very good fries. So Smash yeah. Burger definitely rates better than uh, Steak and Shake, which has weak fries. But Steak and Shake's been a, a, you know, kind of a sentimental favorite of mine. Uh, since I was a kid, and I ate that, I said when I ate, when I lived in Chicago, I ate at Steak and Shake thirty eight days in a row, and they had a tw- they had a twenty four <laughs> seriously had a yep. twenty four hour drive through. Good for you. And uh, uh, I, I couldn't stop going. To, the only reason that I stopped at thirty eight days is I had to leave town on a to cover the Bulls on a road trip. Sure, right? yeah. would still been get probably would have gone to seventy. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Fat Burger. <laughs> you were the White Sox. Huh? That's right. Yeah. Fat Burger comes in a little bit after that, uh, so I downgrade Fat Burger a little bit on the power ratings because the, the service is just too slow. It takes forever to get your food. It's a little bit too expensive. I am a big El Polo Loco guy, and I know mm-hmm. that's how Brad Pitt got his start when he would dress up as the chicken yeah. uh, as well uh, at 23. Uh, I love their chicken, pretty good menu, and I love that you're repping Huey Magoo's at 22. Mm-hmm. I finally had it. It's right down the street. The tenders are better than Raising Cane's. It, not a lot to work with in terms of the options with the menu, but Huey Magoo's was fantastic. Only like 2,000 followers on social media. I mean, not a lot of uh, uh, places out there, but that's I, – I tagged them. I said, great job, Huey Magoo's. Let's get the word out. Yeah, I need more of a marketing presence, yes. right? Because I had not heard of Huey Magoo's really until – I think it was half I – was, I was here at the Circus Sportsbook. It was halftime of the uh, Packers 49ers playoff game. And I was hungry, and I decided to go over to the food court at the Fremont Casino and check it out. And I found this Huey Magoo's place. I mm-hmm. tried it. And it's pretty good. That's right. And um, anyway, Mitch, to follow up on your question too, Fuddruckers, I love the burgers of Fuddruckers. I love the your own build your own toppings bar, everything about it. But Fuddruckers is a little bit too difficult to find, so it gets downgraded okay. a little bit in that you know that category as well. So there's a lot of things that go into it. And in terms of rankings, not always uh, exactly scientific, but uh, I have my own uh, reasons for the power rankings. Long John Silver is going to surprise some people at 30. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you haven't been there in a while, the chicken planks at Long John Silver's are outstanding. I go there at least uh, once every two weeks, if not, you know, three, four times a month for the chicken planks, the hush puppies, smother that stuff in tartar sauce. It's incredible. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, uh, so... You get a lot of these chicken places like Huey Magoo's and Raising Cane's. I'm not going to throw Long John Silver's in there because they got fish too. But, you know, we're going to get a lot of feedback on Twitter about these franchises. And people are going to throw a bunch of chicken places out there. One of them, Crispy Crunchy Chicken. Have you heard of that? No. Somebody hit me up on that on Twitter yesterday. There's a couple spots in Vegas. I went to try it out. A lot of these chicken places are very similar. There's a dime a dozen. There's hundreds of them out there. Yeah, right. You could have your own power rankings, top 50, just for chicken places. So we can't yep. rank them all, right? Yeah. Yep. Ranking the best of the best. And I, I will say that Huey Magoo's, I believe, is a, is a rising star on this list. Yep. Uh, unranked last year, 
all the way up to 22 this year. Ooh, all right. Now we're getting there. All right, 20 to 11. Mm-hmm. Good to see A&W on there. Uh, big fan of A&W. Very hard to find, though. Nothing like the Frosty Mug. Burgers are great. Uh, love the onion rings. T- take us through what you did. Uh, we don't, we're getting a Bojangles finally. Yeah. Uh, they're at 20, but walk us through 20 all the way up to 11 here. 20 Bojangles, 19 Quadobo, which I think is far superior to Chipotle, and uh, the Bears going to back me up on that one. Jersey Mike subs, the big Kahuna cheesesteak. If you haven't had it, you got to go get it. Okay. Put jalapeno peppers on that. Incredible. A&W out in Boulder City, out by Hoover Dam. It's worth the drive out there. And, uh, Paul, as a matter of fact, I brought an A&W root beer for you. Oh, thanks and today so I know how much you love it. I appreciate it. Do you know what the name of the Nick, uh, the um, name of the mascot is at A&W? Oh, yeah. Rudy the Ooh, Bear. Okay. Oh. Yeah, Rudy the Bear. <laughs> All right, okay. number 16 is Burger King. That's one of your favorite spots. The Whopper is a first ballot Hall of Fame fast food sandwich. Taco John's, Ooh, very underrated. Potato Olay's, oh, the childhood, man. Mitch. I'll tell you what, the hard shell beef tacos, potato Olay's, the whole menu, Mitch. Can you go ahead and explain to those who don't know, this, this franchise is very popular. It's Wyoming-based, but it's uh, mostly on the West Coast. It's so much better than Taco Bell, it's a joke. Uh, it's not even, you can't even compare that or Del really? Taco, in my yeah. opinion. Taco yeah. Really? John, oh, absolutely. Blowout? Oh, yeah. I, I have a hankering for Taco John's all the time, and yeah. we don't have them out here. They used to do run all you could eat back in the day when I was in high school. The trick is the potato oil lays with the nacho sauce. Oh, you, yeah. you scoop up the, the cheese sauce, and then you put it on the taco, and you eat okay. it all together. Incredible combination. So Raising Cane's has slipped. He used to be uh, mm. a fixture in the top ten. Incredible drive through Great. Get very, you in and out. Very good drive through Very efficient. A lot of times the fries are subpar, not cooked uh, the way they should be. And uh, a lot of people complaining that the, the chicken fingers are shrinking. Well, I'll have to look at Not that. Not as big as they used to be. I'll That's tell you what, when I went to Huey Magoo's last week, Magoo's chicken fingers were better than Raisin Cane's. Right? Now that's huh? strong. Okay. They are. They are. But the toast is better at Cane's, and I think the fries are better. But we can debate that. What else do we have okay. here on the uh, – we got 13 Whataburger. 12 was 12 in and out. 12 was in and out. The 12 in and out burger. Number 11 is Zippy's, I believe, yep. right? Yep. So Zippy's, the Hawaiian barbecue joint that's – Got about 20 locations on the islands, one here in Vegas. If you haven't been there, you got to go. The menu's incredible. You've been to Zippy's. I have not yet. What? No, no. I've not All been to Zippy's. All the trips to Maui, you have not been to Zippy's? No, no. i never been wow. there. By the way, I just got a text from uh, Paul Stone. That Paul Stone's another fast food fanatic. Panera Bread in Tyler, Texas has a drive through Another there one? Wow. Okay. All right, there Paul. Yeah. There you go. Paul Stone knows his college football and his fast food as well. We're going to get to the top 10 now. You can try to rifle through this anyway. All right, here we go. We got a new franchise in the top 10 this year. It's KFC. You can go to KFC and get the two piece with a biscuit and a side for $4.99. I'll tell you what, prices are out of control at a lot of fast food yes, they and are. restaurants yep. in general. I gave KFC bonus points for an affordable meal that you can go in and get for five bucks. Number nine, Wendy's. Number eight, Dairy Queen. It's funny, I talked to Weston Stratman who uh, was in our Circuit Friday Football Invitational from Nashville. He told me last night he loves Dairy Queen. A lot of people don't understand why it's in the top ten. It's very underrated by most. Seven Arby's. Chick-fil-A has dropped to number six. Mm. Talk about this a little bit more later. And That's then, a big uh, development wow. right there. Yeah, it is. But Chick-fil-A, hey, if, if uh, you're not getting better, you're falling behind. And Chick-fil-A is not doing anything to improve its menu that much. Number five, McDonald's. That's going to be a polarizing uh, position for a lot of people. Uh, let's go to number four. Freddy's Steak Burgers staying steady at number four for the second year in a row. Love the menu. Cheese number curves. three, Shake Shack. Yeah. We met there for lunch oh. uh, a couple months ago. Love it. Love the burgers. So good. Place. The whole menu. I, po- I pondered Shake Shack number one this year. Yeah. For the third year in a row, we got a new number one, but it rotates back and forth from Portillo's to Culver's to Portillo's again this year. And I will tell you later the deciding factor in why Portillo surpassed Culver's in the rankings. I can't wait to hear that. Also, some more line moves. NFL preseason. We'll ask Matt about that next year on VEASAN. Coming up in 15 minutes, the Bear, Chris Felica, is going to join the program. He wanted to share his top 10 fast food power rankings. Big day here on the network. Matt Humans is in studio. He went over a lot of the top 50. You can go check it out now as well. Become a VEASAN Pro subscriber. You can get it. VEASAN.com. Rankings are released today. You have a new number one, and you have the uh, – how long have you had this Portillo's 
drink cup here? Uh, that's a good question, Mitch. I would say uh, several years. <laughs> So you don't have any silverware, you have no plates, you have no cups at your house, no yeah. dishware. But no you hang, dishware. You hang on to no. this thing, though. Yeah. Okay. Right. Like to see these cups like this from KFC, I can use these 10 or 20 times. Yeah, Mitch. Uh. Come on. All right. So last year, cover. <laughs> <laughs> what a, re- oh, what a ridiculous question. Uh, 2022, it was Portillo's, number one. Last year, Culver's overtook Portillo's mm. to become the new number one, and you flipped this year, and you told us last hour there's a reason why you have Portillo's now overtaking number one yet again ahead of Culver's. Why is it? Yeah, it's tough because, uh, you, you know, these are interchangeable, really. One, two, separate themselves from the pack. Like I wrote in the column, it's kind of like UConn and Purdue in the college basketball season, UConn, Purdue, and everyone else. Mm-hmm. College football looks like Georgia, Ohio State, and everyone else. And fast food... To me, it's Portillo's, Culver's, and everyone else, even though Shake Shack has really closed the gap, is uh, legit number three. So I was in Tucson, Arizona, late June, early July, on a golf trip, and I went to a uh, Culver's. And some fool in the restaurant ordered steamed broccoli while I was in there eating. And it completely ruined the dining experience, stunk up the entire restaurant, and it really irritated me that steamed broccoli was even on the menu, which I didn't even notice it was on the menu until I, that nasty smell hit me in the face. Mm. And I was trying to eat, and I said, you know, this is ridiculous. First of all, I guess you're kind of picking and, uh, you know, looking at a mole on a supermodel's cheek or something like that. But the, the bottom line is I don't think a fast food joint should ever have broccoli on the menu. And it, I'm telling you, it smelled so bad in that restaurant. It's stuck with me now for a little bit more than a month. And I, I actually docked Culver's a full point for that, for having steamed broccoli on the menu and uh, that experience I had. And that allowed Portillo's wow. to overtake Culver's by a half point in the, in the power ratings. Holly, why do you have Breakdown. Portillo's number one still? Breakdown. Yeah. I, I just was well, just blown away and gave it an A-plus when we went there. And uh, we have to, they have to get – we, they – have to get their act together and get it out here as well. I just thought that between the chocolate cake shake, uh, the the combo with the sausage, with the beef baptized, the fries were unbelievable, the onion rings. You love the chicken sandwich, which I didn't try. I just, it lived up to the hype. It exceeded my expectations. I also loved Culver's too. Yeah. But uh, I thought I was blown away by how professional the staff was, how clean it was, and the options they have. On the menu, I'm with you with the broccoli, a little bit like Newman as well, but uh, he also ticked off Sal Pal when she mentioned you know, his wife puts the broccoli in the lasagna, yeah. which get right. that get that out of you, that poison, as you said. But uh, sure, certainly, but I'm a big Shake Shack guy too, but you know, it's a tough call. But I, I still have to go Portillo's. They really, the, the whole menu, it just the, the sandwich, everything they have. One other my minor thing, uh, yeah. Mitch. So Culver's it has no plans to expand to Nevada. Uh. And that's, that's another. Minus okay. half point in the intangible category. Now, Portillo's does have plans right. to expand uh, to Las Vegas. I called down to the uh, Culver's in uh, Bullhead City, Arizona, two days ago, and I talked to the owner of the franchise, Lori DeShane, and Good. she said, um, hopefully we get into Nevada soon. I'm going to try to uh, see if I can make that happen. So... It would be a big bonus if uh, Culver's could end up in Las Vegas, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I can't believe you have one in St. George, Utah, one in Bullhead City, Arizona, but nothing I know. in Nevada. So the reason why I still have Culver's number one, and oh, by the way, I seriously pondered putting Shake Shack number one. Okay. Sure. This year. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Huge burger guy. I crave cheeseburgers all the time. Maybe my favorite thing on the planet. Oh, their burger's good. It is overtaken in and out burger, and yeah. I've never had a bad thing there. The bun is so good. The burgers are always perfectly cooked. The cheese they put on it, I just it's a delicious no matter what you order there. Yeah. It's outstanding. Even a good hot dog there. No, never had it. Okay, good to know. The reason why I have Culver's ahead of Portillo's, and I had Portillo's a couple of weeks ago, and it was absolutely fabulous. And you're right, the fries were out of this world. The hot dog was amazing. The hot beef, everything was so good. But here's where I had to break it down, right? Because you have to pick one or or one or the other. You can't have them tied for first. And my deciding factor was this. If I was stuck somewhere where the only two fast food options were Portillo's and Culver's for the entire week, and I could only eat one of them, I would go Culver's because of variety. Variety of the menu. And that, that broke it for me. That broke the tie. Okay. That's understandable. That's, that's a category in my power rankings is menu variety, and um, Culver's has got it. Culver's has got the edge. The Culver's menu is incredible. But what if you're on that island and you had to smell the steamed broccoli? <laughs> That stuff is uh-huh. repulsive. Yeah, uh, that, I'm going uh-huh. to make sure that, that it's not going to get delivered to the restaurant. Poison. Right? Well, you're high on Capriati's, Mitch. Well, okay. Another it's, a, reason. it's a big sandwich. It's a, it, it's excellent menu, what they have, the Bobby. 
Uh, get the cranberry out of here. But uh, love the Bobby. Yeah, but six, wow. The reason why is because I'm a big sandwich guy as well, right? Yeah. So I had to squeeze in a sandwich spot in my top 10, and it came down to Capriati's or Jersey Mike's as a national chain again, what we're talking about here. The reason why I took Capriati's is because of what you just said. I think they have a deeper menu than Jersey Mike's. I love Jersey Mike's. It's really good as a national sandwich spot. But Capriati's, you mentioned the Bobby. Bobby's not even in my top five there. Ooh. That's how good I think Capriati's is. And I also have a hankering, and, and I crave tacos all the time. The best national fast food chain to me is Taco John's, even though it's not out here in Las Vegas. So yeah. I had to squeeze that into the yeah. top ten. Interesting list there. You got Smashburger in the top ten. Love Smashburger. I like it. That's that's Can, a, that's an outstanding list right there. I think uh, no five guys for you either. No, in the top no, they're 10. a little bit down. Okay, Matt, can you expand also on what doesn't count? Because I asked you during the yeah. commercial about Perkins. I explained this yeah. in the uh, the column too. So right. diners do not count. I, I love Denny's more than anyone mm-hmm. in the world. Denny's, Waffle House. Doesn't count. Those are diners. Pizza places don't count. That's Skyline a separate Chili, category. we got That's tweets. That's a separate category. We, we, get, yeah. we get tweets every year about Skyline Chili. Believe yeah. me, I love Skyline Chili. Last time I went to the Cincinnati Reds game, I ate eight Skyline Chili dogs. Those things are incredible. But <laughs> I consider Skyline Chili a little bit more of a, uh, a diner-type restaurant. You know, it's just like Buffalo Wild Wings and Wingstop. I don't consider those fast food. It's kind of like its own category. You know, so you've, you've got to draw the line somewhere on this stuff. Everything is not included in fast food. So over the weekend, remember um, Booster Shop, Pat McLaughlin, who, uh, mm-hmm. who was with us in uh, Buena Park, California, yeah. when we went to Portillo's. So I asked uh, Pat, I said, what do you think, Skyline Chili, fast food or not? And, you know, he considered it for several minutes. He said, no, it's not fast food. Okay, all so, right. We are getting plenty, tie. tons of feedback here, by the way. You brought this up about whether mm-hmm. or not a spot is going to have fast uh, drive throughs or not. Mm-hmm. We're getting feedback from Madison, Wisconsin, from uh, Indianapolis and the entire state of Indiana and from the Northeast saying that all of their Pan- all of them, all their Paneras have drive throughs Wow. Is that right? Yeah. So that's a game changer then. I don't no think kidding. any of them in Vegas have drive throughs but I've seen them in uh, California. Their yeah. soup selection strong. Awesome. You know, give me a good bowl of chicken noodle soup, baby. And that that's big. And they have that. <laughs> they have that. I think their yeah. sandwiches are sure. very good. Oh, yeah. Can we check out got, Paul's top ten? Yeah, you got a we problem? Huh? Sure. Let's yeah, I said it. In. Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, like I love your supermodel reference too. I mean, this is this is hard. This is difficult. I went Portillo's one, Shake Shack. Again, we were just there, the three of us. Love. I ordered half the menu. Oh, the again, Culver's three. Uh, it's tough. Chick Chick Fil A. They they made some changes though, Matt. They're bringing some stuff back and 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 bringing some adding some other stuff. And uh, I like their mac and cheese. They also have soup. Sometimes a little bit like McDonald's, though. Yeah. We don't have it today. See, you things know. like mac and cheese yep. and soup don't do it for okay. me. Okay, Freddy's at number five. Oh, for some reason, a lot of places out. It's there's never anyone there at the drive-through. I don't get it. Yeah. And uh, okay, I, they even have good ice cream. Uh, McDonald's six, A and W. Uh, I, I was blown away. I forgot. As yeah, I used to go there all the time as a kid. Hard to find though, but love their burgers and their onion rings. And the uh, the root beer, uh, steak and shake, El Polo Loco, Thai, Huey Magoo's raising canes at ten. All right, rankings are out. Top fifty, the twenty twenty four version from Matt Humans. You can get them at vsin.com as well. Chris Felica is so excited about this. The bear, he wanted to join us. That's coming up in about five minutes. Here, he has a top ten. You're not going to believe what he recently did to go experience Portillos. Well, he'll tell share that story coming up. That I thought that was awesome. Um, I got to ask you a quick question, sneak this in, because you're only on for like the next 15 minutes or so. Are we getting a little out of control of some of these line moves for preseason? The Patriots are up to six and a half or even a seven out there this week? Yeah, that's uh, that's one where the Patriots open one and a half. And I love to bet the NFL preseason, but you got to get ahead of these line moves. You can't be late to the party oh, yeah. and chase a steam. And uh, this is too high now. There was a seven last night, six and a half. Jacoby Brissett's going to start a quarterback for the Patriots, but... Um, no Bryce Young. Uh, no Bryce Young, but st- even if Bryce Young plays, how much of a difference is he going to make? Yeah. I don't like the Panthers quarterback situation. I've also got a column up at vcin.com on the uh, NFL preseason quarterback depth charts. You yep. can check that out if you want to see what have. the rotations are going to be. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you the, the game that fascinates me is uh, the Raiders at the Vikings on Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Uh, because it opened Vikings minus one and a half. Now it's Raiders laying three and a half or four. If I played this, and I'm thinking about playing the Raiders in the first half, because you've got Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell each going to play one quarter, I really don't like the Raiders' third and fourth string situation for a game like this. But the Vikings' uh, backup quarterbacks 
I, I think are better equipped uh, for the second half of that game. So if you play the Raiders, I'd probably look to play first half in that game in Minnesota. Came down and, uh, a little bit. We, there were five and a halves out there the other day. Four, five, uh, four and a half, five point move on the total as well. Yeah, I got a little bit too high as well. I mean, yeah. I read the reports out of Raiders camp, and I talked to the beat writers who cover the team, and neither quarterback, Minshew or O'Connell, has no. been playing well. By the way, there's no. a bet of DraftKings right now I'd recommend. Gardner Minshew to be the Raiders starter in week one is at plus 105. O'Connell's the favorite. Yep. And I, I, I'm pretty sure Minshew's going to be the starter. When the, when the Raiders play week one at the That's Chargers. That's the field that you have for it right All now? Right. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. All right. Um, how about Philadelphia now back to a pick against Baltimore? Yeah, that's one, too. So the the Ravens had a 24-game preseason win streak. They got snapped in that 29-28 loss to the Commanders last year in the final preseason game. But I'll say this. When they put that winning streak together, they had much better backup quarterbacks, yes. more mobile quarterbacks. I don't really like this Ravens quarterback depth chart. Well the, said. the Bear, Chris Felica, will share his top ten. And a great story. He had to go get Portillo's next. He wanted to come on, talk about Matt Eumann's fast food power ratings, and he is on the Progressive Guest Line. Were you more excited for today's power ratings and talking about this or the college football season beginning later this month, Chris? Oh, the, the power ratings, the, the fast food, without a doubt. I mean, that's a no-brainer. I've, I've, I've been talking college football forever, but this is a – this is a special. This is like Christmas morning here with the uh, <laughs> the, 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 the rankings unveiled. It's like it's a once in a year uh, type opportunity. So uh, this is great. I, I, I was happy to uh, have Matt have me involved, and then uh, you guys have me on. It's great. The columns up right now, vcin.com, and the bear is featured in the column. Several uh, comments about the. Uh, his favorite fast food stops. And Mitch, I know there's a story in there that you like. Well, it's so good. So we no spoilers here. We're just going to get right into your number one. You agree with Matt that it's Portillo's. You have them power rated number one. And I love this story. You were recently in Los Angeles, and you were hungry. You wanted to buy tea. Tell the story about going to Portillo's. I think this is great. <laughs> yeah, I, I, as I said, I almost feel bad calling it fast food because it's so much better than that. But yeah, I was, I was in L.A. for five weeks. Uh, from from June and July, covering the uh, the Copa America and Euro soccer tournaments, and it was Fourth of July. We had an off day, and I'm like sitting here. I'm like, I was, was down at the gym, and then like, I just I just wanted like a hot dog and a hamburger or a sandwich or something. And like, family and friends are back east, and I was like ready to go. I knew there was a Seven Eleven like right down the street from the hotel, so I'm like, maybe I'll just go get a couple of hot dogs from Seven Eleven or something. And then for some reason, I remembered your guy's story about like a Portillo's potentially being in the L.A. area. Uh-huh. So I got to Google, and sure enough, Portillo's, Buena Park, uh, MapQuest, or uh, Apple Map, 55 minutes or so, no big deal. Perfect. <laughs> made, made, made the drive from the hotel to Portillo's, got myself the uh, uh, hot dog, a, a chili dog, and one of the, uh, the, the Maxwell Street sausage sandwiches, and then um, – Stayed there, ate, handicapped some races, handicapped some, uh, some some soccer, and then made another order for the Italian beef on the way back oh. to have for dinner for that to have for dinner in the room later that night. And of course, I got the the sauce on the side so it wouldn't be uh, too soggy and damp to eat by, by later that night. What a but veteran it, it, move! It, it's, just, it, it's just a great place. It yeah. really is. Yep, that as a drive through, I was blown away. Great job with the order as well. Uh, good job repping five guys on your list. You're going to surprise a lot of people here, Bear. You got White Castle at three and Taco Bell at four. Oh, you got to explain yeah. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, White Castle, again, it's a sentimental type place for me because I grew up on Long Island. My dad and I used to go to Islander games all the time, and there used to be a White Castle, but probably still is, a White Castle right on Hempstead Turnpike, right near Nassau Coliseum that we would go and grab some dinner before we go to watch the Islanders. So it's kind of a... Uh, it's, it's kind of a sentimental, emotional type of place for me. And I don't get to them very often anymore. Uh, I, but recently when I was at 20, in, in between, I was in L.A. for the soccer. And then later in the week, we had a our football annual football meeting. So I came to Vegas for a couple of days in between. And, of course, I had to make the drive to Arizona across the border uh, to, to go make some bets on uh, on DraftKings. So went to went to White Castle, got my order, drove across, sat on the side of the road there, Kingman Access Road. Had my had my White Castle had made made my bets. It was a good day, but 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 talk, but, but seriously, Taco Bell. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's so convenient and and like in a pinch, you can't go wrong with some chicken soft tacos. Yeah, put some hot sauce on it, roll it up, stuff it in there. Look, but but it's it's not Cadoba or anything like that. But uh, in a pinch, 
Nothing wrong with some chicken soft tacos. You have five guys, number six. So tell us why you have that chain so high ahead of spots like yeah. a Smash Burger, a Shake Shack, a Fud Ruckers, etc. Also, we have to note that he does not have Culver's in the top ten. Have you yeah. been to Culver's? I have not been to okay. Culver's. I, I have not been, and I and and, and I yeah, have not been to Culver's. But I see Five Guys is, again. It's another one. Like, is it fast food? Is it not? Because it doesn't have a drive-through. I I, just, I like I like their burgers. I can get in and out pretty quickly if I order on the app ahead of time. Uh, I, I love the fries. I mean, you, you order a size down, and they always load them up ahead of time. I prefer Five Guys to Shake Shack, and I know that's probably a, a controversial take. Uh, Fud Ruckers is great. I just don't have one mm. uh, in the area anymore. But but it, those burgers used to be fantastic. But it, but it, it, in a pinch here, like like the other the other thing which people always get wound up about is like when they're like, oh, Five Guys is so much better than In and Out. Well, of course it is. It's a different type of burger. It's a different category. Like In and Out is like in the McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's type, like real true fast food. Whereas like Five Guys and Fud Ruckers and Shake Shack are in that different type of like gourmetish hamburger type category okay interesting take uh i would say taco bell can they need to take a page out of chipotle and don't you, you, chipotle you know with the with the meat and coming heavier with the bowl and stuff taco i mean like the ch- chalupa and stuff give me some meat don't be like subway you know where it's all bread oh, I mean, help give me terrible. some more meat there taco bell step your game up my my wife went to taco but we went to subway the other day to, 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 to just get a sandwich for lunch and i'm like you need to like go double meat you on do. the subway yeah. sub yeah. Yes. because like well, it just doesn't do. It. But I'm glglad you mentioned Chipotle because I'm not I'm not Team Chipotle at all. Okay. Like, like, people, people people act like Chipotle is like either like this health food or like this Michelin star restaurant. It's spoiler alert, it's not. Yeah. And like like, like <laughs> Cadoba is so much better. Than, than, than Chipotle, yeah. it's a, I, refu- I, refu- I almost refuse to go there because people love it so much. By the way, Subway was ranked 50 in my list last year and dropped out this year. Subway not even in the top 50. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Uh, now, you, as a Northeastern mm. guy, are you going to catch flack for having Jersey Mike's number five? Probably. probably. But, but again, I, I try and differentiate in, in the quote that I gave Matt. Like, it, I'm always on the road. And usually, like if I'm around here, I'll go to I'll go to a local sure. mom and pop type place and get. But but like if I'm on the road and looking for a sub, like Jersey Mike's is the place to go. It's it's kind of, it's the most kind of like authentic with like the the shredded lettuce and the and the tomato and the like. I I, I can deal with that much better than I can uh, like, like Subway. But like but but in terms of if I'm looking for a quick sandwich, like if I'm in. State College, Pennsylvania, or, or somewhere else, and I, and I just want a sandwich. I'll go. I'll just uh, here some sandwich. I'll, Jersey Mike's is by far the place to go. 